and Epic that will redefine the King of the Seas in the manner of Jason Aaron's Punisher series. There are reports about Jason Aaron's future at Marvel Comics, and you're thinking, like I'm thinking, I thought he had no future at Marvel Comics. He's not exclusive to Marvel anymore. He's worked with other publishers, going to be doing IDW's team in D, currently doing some stuff with DC Comics. I believe he's going to be working on the Absolute Universe with Scott Snyder as well. But apparently, now that he's not exclusive to anybody, he's going to go back to Marvel, and they're threatening us that he's going to give a character the Punisher treatment. Do you remember Jason Aaron's Punisher run? Kind of defined who he'd become at Marvel Comics there at the end. Just very destructive, destroying things for the sake of destroying things because it felt like he was really in a creative rut at Marvel Comics. It didn't feel like he really had the stuff anymore. It wasn't like, you know, back in the day when he was doing Thor, at least in the beginning of that, people really enjoyed that. I thought he did pretty good on Star Wars. Hell, he created what is likely the best story of Star Wars since Disney bought the IP from Lucasfilm. Vader Down is absolutely awesome co-written by Kieran Gillen, another creator that I think is struggling right now after returning to Marvel Comics. You know, so he had some highs, he had some lows, but he was always pretty destructive with the characters. The best example really being, you know, outside of Punisher being Wolverine. Really, really wanted to fuck that character over, and he did uh, Six Ways from Sunday. There's no way to, to describe the amount of damage Jason Aaron did to Dadverine, whatever you want to call him at this point. He's not even really Logan anymore. He's not really Wolverine and Jason Aaron and the destruction that he did, that character were a big part of that. You know, he ended on a big Avengers run, if you want to call it that. Had this stupid event he was leading up to that no one cared about. I don't think anybody was reading. It was just really unsuccessful because Jason Aaron was tapped out at Marvel Comics. And obviously, with what he did for Punisher, basically speaks for itself. And it felt like he needed a change. And I do think that is borne out to be true. Batman Offworld, absolutely awesome. Doug Mankey art. Jason Aaron really nailing that one's been a lot of fun. The Superman Superstars Initiative action comics starting out with Jason Aaron. That Bizarro story, not really awesome, but it's not really bad either. It's just kind of sitting there in the middle. I wouldn't say it's something that you should go out there and read, but it's certainly not something that you should go out of your way to avoid either. And in today's comic book climate at Marvel and DC, that's a huge win. Not being insufferable and being worth reading and not feeling like you're going to get your soul crush reading your favorite characters is an enormous win. And that's what he's basically been doing at DC thus far. We'll see what happens with his absolute Superman. I believe that's the character that he's going to be working on in the absolute universe. That'll be down the road. They haven't even announced that yet. And we know that he's going to be coming on to IDW's team and T, the best gig in all of comic books, replacing Sophie Campbell after 50 straight issues of absolute crap is going to be the easiest assignment in the history of Jason Aaron's career. But hopefully he does something to revive the Turtles as well. I wish he had not gone home again. You know, I know, I know Jason Aaron started out in the indie scene, and he's been known for you know pretty violent, pretty brutal comic books and all that kind of stuff. But I think he should have just avoided Marvel Comics for a few more years. Here's the details that we have for, do you call him Namor or Namor? Because I don't want to dead name the character. I'm told that could be offensive. Namor, the Submariner's forthcoming miniseries, best described as underwater Game of Thrones, Promises to change Marvel lore forever. Later this summer, superstar writer Jason Aaron will breathe new life into the King of Atlantis. In the eight-issue Namor miniseries, the book sees Namor abdicate his throne for as yet unknown reasons. This sets off a war of succession between various kingdoms of the ocean. Man, remember what everyone was doing? This is like Game of Thrones, but with Star Trek. This is Game of Thrones, but Star Wars. This is Game of Thrones, but Teletubbies. You can't rip to this. Everybody loves Game of Thrones. You're not seeing a whole lot of this is Game of Thrones for Mighty Morphin Power Ranger pitches anymore, but apparently this is Game of Thrones for underwater Atlantis sea dwellers and stuff like that with Namor. You probably don't remember this because I did not remember this. At the end of Jason Aaron's Avengers run, I can't even remember the name of the comic book, but Namor was taken in and I guess put into prison for, for his crimes. I think he was doing a lot of like eco-terrorism, if I remember at one point within Jason Aaron's Avengers run, which didn't actually start out terrible, but it got there real quick. As soon as War of the Realms happened and Avengers had to cross into War of the Realms, it just went to crap almost immediately. You got a kind of an okay, like, Blade story where they were fighting vampires, and then it just went to crap after that. And it never recovered. It was just terrible to the very end uh, with Jason Aaron on Avengers. And I think we're going to see much the same with Jason Aaron on Game of Thrones Namor style. 
wow, there's going to be a lot of backstabbing and people killing and stuff for Namor's throne in Atlantis. You're going to have to come up with a damn good reason to actually convince anybody that actually likes Namor that he would abdicate the throne and just give it up. It seems like he's been pretty proud over the years of his Atlantean empire. In fact, he's almost been at war with the surface dwellers since the beginning of his creation almost. You know, he is the first, I guess, mutant within the Marvel Comics universe. A lot of history there. If you don't know, Namor actually came out before Aquaman. Aquaman was actually a ripoff of Namor. But for some reason, Aquaman became a bigger character, even though I think Namor probably has a better design. Like, I like the ears. I like the, the boots with the little wings and all that kind of stuff. I like Aquaman, too, but Namor probably should have been a bigger deal. But they've continuously dropped the ball on this character. And he's almost been persona non grata over the last few decades at Marvel Cogs. They bring him out every once in a while for an Avengers story, sometimes for an X-Men story. And then when that's over, they put him back in the closet and they forget about the character for a very, very long time. And then obviously they're going to bring him out for Jason Aaron so he can change the lore of Marvel Comics forever. I do not doubt that that's what the purpose of the book is. And I do not doubt that Jason Aaron will go out of his way to rewrite the story of Namor because that's what he's been doing lately. That's what he likes to do with characters. I like the design. I like the name. I like what I think they should stand for, but their history absolutely sucks to make that happen. So I'm going to go back and retcon the entire thing. And I don't think Namor fans are actually looking for that. I think Namor fans and a lot of Avengers fans and maybe even X-Men fans would just like to see Namor return and actually be something in the Marvel Comics universe. He's never going to be anything in the MCU. They kind of dropped the ball on that one. When we got Namor instead of Namor, and they totally fucked up the character and everything about him, you would think they would have actually learned a lesson from Victoria Alonso and the brain trust at Marvel Studios that maybe going back to a character that's been around, I don't know, for about 80 years at this point, maybe fundamentally changing every aspect about the character could be destructive in the long term. But they brought Jason Aaron back to do this anyway because Marvel Comics is basically a shit show in 2024, and it doesn't appear to be getting better. If that wasn't a big enough threat for you, let's read the solicitation for the really big threat. War rages beneath the waves from the lost cities of the secret seas to the fathomless depths where the elder whales reign. Seven kings, old and new, fight to rule the watery realm. But where is Namor, the once mighty submariner? He's sitting behind bars on the surface with no intention of ever setting foot in the seas again. So begins an oversized Atlantean event that will forever reshape the landscape of the undersea world while at last laying bare the dark history of Atlantis and its fiercest, most infamous defender, an epic that will redefine the king of the seas in the manner of Jason Aaron's Punisher series. My goodness, how fucking stupid do you actually have to be to want to recreate the Jason Aaron Punisher series? That is literally something that only someone retarded would want to do. It was destructive to the character. You just replaced Punisher with a new character, and he lasted all the four fucking issues before you had to cancel the series abruptly. You never even announced it. It just went away because nobody cared about Punisher when it wasn't actually Frank Castle. People weren't interested in the character once you actually destroyed him, which is exactly what Jason Aaron did in his Punisher series. Basically took all the things that made Punisher who he was in the beginning, love of his wife, love of his children, losing them, the fact that that sent him over the line, trying to seek justice and vengeance and all that kind of stuff. Well, it turns out he was a terrible husband. He was a terrible father. His wife was leaving him before she died in the very first place. His entire mission was a load of shit. According to Jason Aaron and now Marvel Comics lore, it turns out Frank Castle wasn't driven to the edge because he saw his wife murdered. He was a serial killer when he was seven because of what Jason Aaron did to the character in his Punisher series. I cannot believe that anybody in their right mind would ever want to recreate the destruction that Jason Aaron's Punisher series did to Frank Castle and the character. We don't even see him anymore. And don't worry, they are going to try and push whatever fake Punisher character they created. I don't remember his name anymore because there weren't enough issues to make me actually care about the character. He just wasn't problematic. He didn't have the same logo. So it's not a problem anymore. It's so stupid that Marvel would want to go and Jason Aaron Punisher Namor. Namor already is a tarnished brand at Marvel Comics. They don't use the character. 
A lot of times when people even think about Namor nowadays, they don't think of him as the king of Atlantis. They don't think of him as one of the early Avengers or an invader or, or the first mutant within Marvel comic books. They think of him as the guy that wants to go completely Peppy Le Pew on Sue Storm. And you can't blame him because she is a hottie and all that kind of stuff. But it has certainly tainted the character and they want to do nothing with it. Unfortunately, they're handing him over to Jason Aaron. In an interview with Marvel, Jason Aaron mentioned the different worlds that Namor travels in. Mutant, Avenger, Atlantean, and King. Atlantis' throne is Namor's birthright. He has gone to great lengths to protect Atlantis and the undersea world. And the idea that he has turned his back on both of them is shocking. Aaron remained coy about what led Namor to this point, but fans can assume it would not be good. Marvel revealed that Namor will be in a land-based prison when the book begins, with no desire to return to Atlantis. Does that even sound right for the character? The beginning stages of the book, the foundational elements of whatever Namor the Submariner from Jason Aaron is going to be, is diametrically opposed with who the character is. You've already fucked it up straight out of the gate. And this is the kind of stuff I expect from Jason Aaron, not the writer, but Jason Aaron, the Marvel Comics writer. Their editorial staff do not know their asses from their heads at this point. They literally cannot differentiate them. They have no good ideas, and they keep going back to the well over and over and over again and failing over and over and over again. Bringing Jason Aaron back, maybe not the worst idea in the world. Bring Jason Aaron back so he can specifically destroy a character that's been around for 80 years is the worst idea in the world. And me personally, I wouldn't have invited Jason Aaron back to Marvel Comics for at least five years. Let's make sure that he can actually fix his name which was completely tarnished over the last three or four years, maybe even longer than that, because this ending on Thor Blue 2 at Marvel Comics itself. Maybe let him go revive Team and T. Do, do a good Batman story. Maybe Absolute Superman blows up and Jason Aaron is a real name again. But going out there, bringing him back so he can destroy yet another Marvel character is only going to further tarnish his reputation. And I wish he wouldn't have taken the book, because when I see the name Jason Aaron on a solicit nowadays, when it's not at Marvel Comics, I don't think, oh my God, what's he going to do to the character that I like? I think, huh, Batman Offworld been pretty damn cool. Not exactly traditional Batman stuff, but a whole lot of fun. Looks good, reads well. Superman Bizarro story, a little bit too predictable in the end. Everyone becomes a Bizarro and backward, so Joker becomes the world's smartest man. Not exactly the coolest idea in the history of the world. It's certainly been done before, but it wasn't terrible either. That's more than I can say for Jason Aaron's Avengers run. That's more than I can say for Jason Aaron's Punisher run. And that's more than I can say for the end of Jason Aaron's Thor run. He was starting to get better. Maybe he wasn't even getting better. Maybe he was just finally getting some good editorial support and refixing his tarnished reputation within comic books. And now they bring him back to go fuck up another character that a lot of people like, a lot of people care about. I would like to see Namor be a big deal at Marvel Comics again, but it's never going to happen when you continuously go back to this well of let's Game of Thrones up Namor and make him a bigger asshole than we've already made him already. Just make the guy a villain. Let him be an eco-terrorist and let him lead the armies in the ocean against the surface dwellers for a couple of years. And maybe you can end that with a big event and have some fun and make the character mean something again because Namor is meaningless. He's Namor at this point. They destroyed him in the MCU. And certainly before that, they had already been working on destroying him in comic books. And I do think Jason Aaron on this book is the coup de grace, the finishing blow for the character, which should be a lot more important today than he actually is. If you like more comic book discussions like this, but much longer format and also lots of comic book reviews, you need to go check out Thinking Critical Patreon. I've been doing this for six months now, having a ton of fun doing it all basically in podcast style. And you can get all the audio files for all the videos if you want to listen rather than having to have that stupid YouTube app up, which is very cumbersome on your phone and also drains your battery and all that kind of stuff. Lots of fun to be had there. You can download all the videos and the exclusive podcast straight from Patreon. There's a link in the video description if you haven't checked it out already.